Texan Global School Inequalities and Inequations In this class, we will discuss properties of inequalities and the processes for solving inequations. An inequality is defined as a relationship between two expressions that are not equal, hence, one of the expressions is said to be greater or less than the other. The symbols of greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to are used, which indicate the sense of inequality. As inequalities and equations, properties of inequalities are presented. The additive indicates that we can add or subtract any value on both sides of the inequality without reversing its sign. The multiplicative indicates that if we multiply or divide by any positive value, the inequality sign does not change. However, if we multiply or divide by any negative value, the inequality is reversed. We can also add or multiply member by member two inequalities with the same sign, thus obtaining an inequality with the same sign. The transitive indicates that if a value a is greater than b and b is greater than c, then a will be greater than c. Finally, raising some power or applying a positive root does not change the inequality. But if it is raised to a negative power, the sign must be reversed. From this concept of inequality follows the concept of an equation. An inequation is one that contains a certain set of values of the variable for which the inequality is valid. Now, a linear inequation in one variable has more than one element in its solution set. This set is represented using set builder and interval notation seen in previous classes. They are essentially solved the same as the equations. The only difference is that we must be careful when multiplying by some negative number, since the sign will need to be reversed. Let's look at a first example. We will find the solution set of the following inequation. To isolate the variable x, we will apply the additive property to add the additive inverse of 1, which is negative 1. We apply it to both sides of the inequation to not alter it. Simplifying results that x is less than 3. Since we are not multiplying by a negative value, the sign of the inequality is not altered. Using interval notation, we can represent the solution set as shown on the blackboard. The solution set represents all those values less than 3, meaning that any value within that interval satisfies the inequality. To verify, we can substitute any value less than 3. For example, if x equals 2, we substitute in the original inequality and, when simplifying, results that the inequality is true, since 3 is less than 4. If we propose a value that does not belong to the solution interval, for example, if x is equal to 4, Substituting in the original inequality and simplifying results that it is false, since 5 is not less than 4. In the following example, we will apply the additive property to isolate x, adding the additive inverse of negative 8, which is 8. We simplify obtaining for x greater than 8. We then apply the multiplicative property, multiply by the multiplicative inverse of 4, which is a fourth on both sides, not to alter the inequality. Since we multiply by a positive value, the inequality sign is not altered. Simplifying results that x is greater than 2. Again, we use set builder and interval notation to represent the solution set. To verify, we propose some value that belongs the solution interval. For example, if x is equal to 3, by substituting in the original inequality and simplifying, results a true inequality, since 4 is greater than 0. However, if we propose a value outside the interval, for example, if x is equal to negative 1, the inequality is false, since negative 12 is not greater than 0. In this example, we will group like terms on each side of the inequality. To the left side, we will send the linear terms, and to the right side, the independent terms. We will then apply the additive property to cancel the one from the left side. We repeat the process to cancel the two x of the right member. Adding like terms and simplifying results negative x less than or equal to negative 5. So we multiply by negative 1 on both sides of the inequality. This implies that the sign needs to be reversed, resulting in x greater than or equal to 5. We then use set builder and interval notation to represent the solution set. We verify by proposing values within the interval. For example, if x is equal to 11, we see that the inequality is true by substituting in the original inequality and simplifying since 12 is less than or equal to 18. If we propose a value outside the solution interval, we can see that if x is equal to 0, substituting and simplifying results that 1 is not less than or equal to negative 4. On the other hand, a quadratic inequation in one variable 
has more than one element in its solution set and is determined by the zeros of the quadratic function. We must obtain and analyze the critical numbers to define the solution interval. We will use the processes seen in previous classes to solve quadratic equations. This example will obtain the solution set of the following quadratic inequality in one variable. We will apply the additive property to group and simplify like terms. The goal is for all terms to be on the left-hand side. In this way, we will have the quadratic expression to obtain the zeros. We then cancel the 2 x squared and the 9 on the right side. Adding like terms results x squared minus 4 greater than or equal to 0. We can see that we have a difference of squares, which factors as conjugate binomials. So, x squared minus 4, when calculating the roots and substituting in the conjugate binomials, is factored as x plus 2 times x minus 2. This greater than or equal to 0. Hence, by setting each factor equal to 0, we obtain the zeros, also called critical numbers. When x is equal to negative 2, and x is equal to 2. Once the critical numbers are obtained, we will analyze the solution interval. We propose a value less than negative 2. So, if x is equal to negative 3, for example, by substituting in the original inequality, results that the inequality is true, meaning that values less than negative 2 belong to the interval. Now we propose a value between the critical numbers negative 2 and 2. So, if x is equal to 0, for example, the inequality is false, since 5 is not greater than or equal to 9, indicating that the elements between critical numbers do not belong to the solution interval. Finally, we propose a value greater than 2. For example, if x is equal to 3, the inequality is true, since 32 is greater than or equal to 27. Then, the solution set includes all those values of x less than or equal to negative 2 and greater than or equal to 2. We can see on the line the critical numbers, and the values that we propose to verify the solution interval. An inequation in two variables is an inequality that has a set of ordered pairs represented as a solution region in the Cartesian plane. The process to obtain the solution region implies isolating the dependent variable y. Then, we must momentarily replace the symbol of inequality with that of equality. We tabulate to plot on the plane. Finally, we have to identify the solution region proposing coordinates of some of the regions of the plane. Let's see an example. We will obtain the solution region of the following inequality with two variables. So we isolate y using the additive property to cancel the one. Then we substitute the equality symbol for the inequality symbol. This allows to tabulate and graph in this case, the line, since it is linear or first degree. For the tabulation, we proposed values from negative two to two. And we plotted the coordinates on the plane. We can see a line that divides the plane into two regions. We then choose a point in one of the regions. For simplicity, we propose the origin of coordinates 0, 0. Hence, x is equal to 0 and y is also equal to 0. We substitute in the original inequality. By substituting, results that the inequality is true, since 1 is greater than or equal to negative 2, meaning that the solution region is the one above. If we propose any point of the other region, we can verify that the inequality is going to be false. It should be noted that the sign of the inequality is closed, that is, it is greater than or equal to, implying that the points of the line do belong to the solution region, and therefore it is drawn continuous. In this last example, we will follow the same process to obtain the solution region of this inequality with two variables. We then isolate y using the additive property to cancel the two. Then, we substitute the inequality symbol for the equality symbol to tabulate. Since it is quadratic, a parabola should be plotted. We propose values from negative 3 to 3 to obtain the graph's points in the plane. We can see that a parabola divides the plane in two regions. So, we choose a point in one of the regions. Again, we propose the origin of coordinates 0, 0, implying that x is equal to 0 and y is also equal to 0. We substitute in the original inequality to see if it is true. By substituting, we can see that the inequality is false, since 2 is not less than negative 1, meaning that the solution region is the one below. If we propose other point of the other region, we can verify that the inequality is going to be true. It should be noted that since the sign of inequality is open, that is, the sign is less than, implies that the points of the parabola do not belong to the solution region, and therefore are drawn dotted. Texan Global School
Global Online Learning. Knowledge for the World. www.texanglobalschool.com.